React is one of the most used tools for creating single-page applications and websites. Its routing and state handling work excellent when dealing with any kind of data. Normally, React apps have a very clean and organized route structure with neat and short URLs, but there might be a feature on which you want to store some data in the URL as well, so that it can be easily shared and replicated. One such example may be the search function of a web store or something like this. The additional information we can store inside the URL is called the query string, and it starts with a question mark after the path ends. You may recognize this from the Google search or similar. In today's video, we will show you exactly how you can utilize this powerful technique of storing small amounts of data in the URL query string using React and the React Router library. For the purpose of this video, we will create a small and simple application to demonstrate and explain how the concepts we will cover work. So, let's take a look. First, we will have a home page on where we can choose between three buttons. When clicking one of those buttons, we will get redirected to the search page and the corresponding query parameter will be set in the URL. On the search page, there's an input form, so we can change the language displayed on the screen to whatever we want. As you can see, the URL updates accordingly. When we refresh the page, it works the same as before, so if you deploy the app and share the link, someone visiting it would see exactly the same as you do right now. Before we start with the tutorial, we want to quickly go over the prerequisites you should have to get the most out of this video. You should have npm and VS Code installed. Additionally, you should already have some knowledge and basic understanding of JavaScript and React itself. To provide a faster workflow, we will be using Emmet a lot and some React code snippets which you can install via the Visual Studio Code extension marketplace. For this project, we are using the boilerplate provided by Create React App. Use npx to install it with the following command. npx create react app and then the name of your folder. Please note that this might take a while depending on your internet speed and hardware. We will use the React Router DOM library for handling the routing in our application. Therefore, go ahead and install it with npm install and then double dash save React Router DOM. But make sure to change directories first to your project folder with cd and then the name of your folder. Once we installed all the necessary dependencies, we can finally start the local development server by running npm start in the terminal. For the styling of this small project, we decided to just use Bootstrap 4. Go inside the public folder of your project and open the index.html file. Next, go into the head section and delete all the unnecessary comments and place the link for the Bootstrap CSS and the script tags for the Bootstrap JavaScript dependencies. We will provide a link to the CDN documentation in the description of this video. Now we can finally start working on the React application. First of all, open the app.js file. Inside there, we want to create all the template stuff and create our own component. Go inside the return of the function and set up the router for the app. Inside the router, use a switch and inside there set up two routes, one for the home page and the other one for the search page. Make sure to set the component prop of the routes respective to the components. This won't compile right now as we don't have created and imported those components yet, but we will do soon. Create a new folder named components in the source folder of the project. Inside the components folder, create a new file for the home component. Inside this file, create a new functional React component which exports itself by default. Let's build the return of this component. Create a wrapper div which sets the background dark and the text light using bootstrap classes. Also give it a custom style attribute and set its height to 100 viewport height, so it will always cover the full screen. Inside this div, create a container and inside this container a heading and a small paragraph. Underneath this we want to place three buttons, pointing to the search page with different parameters. To do this, create three links with class names of btn, btn primary and mr3 to give them a small margin on the right between each other. Feel free to choose whatever languages you like and set the queue parameter in the URL accordingly. Don't forget to import the link component from React Router DOM as well. Next, we want to create the search page. For this, create a new file inside the components folder named search.js. Inside the search component, create a functional React component again like before. Import both components in the app.js component and see what we built so far. Please note that in order to not get an error at this point, we'll have to use the browser router component instead of the default router, as we don't have a browser history created yet and the browser router creates one by itself. Inside the return of our search component, create a setup similar to the homepage. First create a div which sets the background to dark and the text to light. Then create a container with some top padding and a height of 100 VH. Inside the container, we first want to build a button which gets us back to the homepage. To do this, create a link to the homepage with the class of btn, btn success and mb5 for some margin on the bottom. Set its text to whatever you want, we just used an arrow and back to home. Don't forget to import the link component as well. Now we need to create some logic to store the language and input. For this, we will use the use state hook which we have to import from the core React library first. Underneath the button, we want to display the current language as a heading and a small paragraph praising this language. Emphasize the language name by wrapping it inside a span which gives it a different color. We just chose the text info bootstrap class for this. 
The last thing we have to build in the return of this component is the input bar you saw at the beginning of this video. Create a form with an onSubmit set to the submit action we will create in a minute. Also give it the margin on the top. Inside the form create a div of class input group and inside there the actual input of type text. Give it a class name of form control and the placeholder of your choice. In React, forms and inputs are control components, which means they won't update their values by itself when you type in something. Therefore, set the value of the input to the input variable we created earlier and the onChange function to an anonymous arrow function calling the setter method for the input state variable with the appropriate value. Lastly, we will create a submit button. For this, create a div of class input group append and a button inside of class btn and btn primary. The button should have the type attribute set to submit. Nice, now we have completed writing the markup of this application. If you liked this tutorial so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and giving this video a thumbs up, it would really help us. We want to create the form submit handler next. Create a new function that takes the event object as parameter. Prevent the default behavior first so the page won't reload when we submit the form we just created. Next we want to set the language and state to the input of the form. Then we want to update the URL accordingly, which we will do later. At the end of the submit handler, clear the input by setting it to an empty string. When the component mounts, we want to retrieve the queue parameter from the query string of the URL and set the state of our component accordingly. To achieve this, we will use the use effect hook, which we have to import first. We want it to work just like the component did mount function of a class component, so it only fires once when the component first loads up. We achieve this by just setting the dependency array, which is the second parameter of the use effect hook, to an empty array. Inside the use effect, get all of the URL parameters first. For this, use the URL search params object, which you should already know from default JavaScript. It takes the actual query string as a parameter. The query string is stored inside the location prop we can use with our search component. If you didn't know already, every component wrapped inside the router can use the location prop as well. Next, we want to extract the queue parameter from the query string. Then set the language and state to this parameter as well. If there's no value stored in the URL for queue, set it to a language of your choice. We chose MATLAB for this sake. Now our app is almost fully functional. Note that the compiler will give us a warning because of the empty dependency array in the use effect hook. To avoid this, write a comment saying ESLint disable next line at the end of the function. The only thing left to do is creating the history of our application. For this, create a file in the components folder. Inside this file, import the create browser history function from history first and then export it as default. Next, go into the app.js file and import the history. Delete the stuff with browser router we talked about earlier and pass the history component as the history prop of the router. Lastly, go inside the search component again and import the history as well. Head to the place within the submit action where we want to update the query string. Use history.push and then the relative URL to achieve this. That's it, we finished building this project in almost no time. Feel free to test it out as much as you want. Was this tutorial helpful? Please let us know in the comments. Also make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for weekly content. We're excited to see you again next week and until then, stay healthy and keep on learning.